checks out. Lots to get to. Let's get to it. First, we're going to start at the G20. And here is the scuttlebutt at the G20. Justin Trudeau is not popular. and Nobody's interested in seeing him. Nobody's interested in talking to him. And he's noticed. <gasps> Here's... I can't say this person's name. So here is the scuttlebutt. G20 insiders gossip. Justin Trudeau is hopping mad. He was excluded and sidelined from everything, including TV cameras that refused to cover him in any significant way. India was perfectly courteous and polite, but not one inch more. He suspended trade talks with India only to have the in me EU corridor announced without him. Even though Canada is an observer in the biofuel alliance, Trudeau was excluded from that announcement as well. So they're doing the announcements and they're not waiting for him because he's usually late anyway, right? He doesn't actually show up on time. People were waiting around for Trudeau. So they said, no, we're not waiting. Done. <laughs> Just take the picture. Do the, do the video, the whole deal. Here is Queen Paula. And she says, is Trudeau actually at the summit? He's conspicuously missing from this video. So this is Modi's video. And he says, it's been a proactive morning at the G20 summit in Delhi. And this is just a quick video showing... Um, leaders meeting with Modi. There's, you can see Sunak, the first one's Biden. So they're showing, that's showing off, but you know, look at all these leaders. Justin Trudeau is not in the video. Here you go. Aaj, G20 ke president ke tor par, Bharat पूरी दुनिया का आह्वान करता है कि हम मिलकर सबसे पहले इस ग्लोबल ट्रस्ट डेफिसिट को एक विश्वास एक भरोसे में बदलें यह हम सभी के साथ मिलकर चलने का समय है और इसलिए सबका साथ ओके इटली राइट सुनाक Italy, etc., etc., etc. That's pretty wild. Did you notice at the beginning as well the placard? What did the placard say? I'll show you. Hold on. There it is, right there. See, Modi, the flag of India, the name Bharat. So <laughs> this lends more credibility to the news I've reported that I haven't seen anywhere else yet. I don't know, is this, is this the thing? So it's interesting, right? It's interesting, more interesting Justin Trudeau's absent um, and the rest, right? Everybody's glad handing, et cetera. Here's Justin and his son getting off the plane, waving to nobody, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, they come down and they, they shake hands with people. It's It's no big deal, but they... It's the post-millennial covering that. And I think that's the last video footage from the G20 that I have of Trudeau. So there you go. Very interesting stuff indeed. We'll see. I mean, it's a shame that our relationship with India is so bad. I wonder if they'll cancel any more trade agreements like the last time Justin Trudeau went to India in 2018. Remember that? Oh, what a disaster. What a disaster. Lori Goldstein, let's move on to China, right? Lori Goldstein says, so the public inter inquiry into foreign interference is going to include Russia, probably Iran, and other state and non-state actors the Trudeau government raised no alarms about while they weren't warning us about Chinese interference in the 2019 and 2021 elections. And Norm says, how do you dilute the effectiveness of an inquiry to insulate yourself? It's like Jeopardy, right? The answer is... You get a public inquiry that's supposed to look at Chinese interference in these specific elections due to CSIS leaks, and you take that inquiry and you expand the, the scope of it to include Iran, non-state actors, Russia, China, not China, excuse me, Russia, and who else? Anybody who's not, um, anybody who's not China, right? Because they don't want anything to come out about their very, very concerning close ties with the Chinese communists. That's fundamentally what it is. Andy Lee is responding to the same thing. She says, let's start here. Justin Trudeau with his trusted liberal, liberal volunteer, Gu Jin Yu. I'm getting the Gu Jin Yun. I'm getting that terribly wrong. So sorry about that. Of Red Maple News. All oh, right, Red Maple News. Yes, Red Maple News. That has probably something to do with red communism, red something. Anyway, um, Gu has been, Ju, Gu, has been campaigning campaigning with him since 2015. She works with the United Front and also partnered with Russia today. China News Service and Jinghua, all foreign missions in the U.S. And she continues, here's my story. And if she wants to support Russia and China, fine. No one is saying she can't. All we're saying is that if you are in Canada working on behalf of foreign governments, you register your activities, particularly if you are one of the PM's trusted media outlets. So, yeah, I mean, I think that the foreign registry battle, the pearl clutching and the fretting over it, et cetera, et cetera, the false um, 
equivalency with regards to this is exactly the same as interning Japanese citizens or something to that effect. Totally, it, it's, it's conflating totally different things. And it is just stalling for time in order to not actually get the inquiry done and, and not get, actually hold anybody accountable for anything and to allow the status quo, which is nobody knows anything about anything, to continue. And I, I don't think that can continue, but they don't want to do an inquiry in, they, they don't want to have any kind of registry. They don't want anything like that. So, I mean, it's unmissable when, when you notice that somebody's not swinging for the ball or not aiming for the target. You know, oh, I missed again. Yeah, we well, missed every single one, right? Like everything you do doesn't move us forward to the goal of getting to the bottom of Chinese interference. Everything you do takes us off that course. So I you wonder why, right? And the obvious answer is because they don't want us to get to the bottom of it. Here is a British story about Chinese infiltration, and it says Andreas, and he's got a Ukraine flag in his profile, and he says a British parliamentary researcher has been arrested on suspicion of spying for China in what is alleged to be one of the most damaging breaches of security involving a hostile state at Westminster. And I think that what's happening is that people are just becoming aware of just how compromised their electoral system and their government system is by China. And China has understood for a long time that in order to get ahead, they need to, in order, in order to have an edge, they need to infiltrate the cabinets, to paraphrase Klaus Schwab. Here is part of the article. It's an archive link. Commons Chinese spy arrested. A British parliamentary researcher has been arrested on suspicion of spying for China in what is alleged to be one of the most damaging breaches of security involving a hostile state at Westminster. The male suspect, who is in his late 20s, is understood to be linked to a number of senior Tory MPs, including several who are privy to classified or highly sensitive information. They include Tom T, of uh, the security minister, and Alicia Kay, the chairman of the Commons Foreign Affairs Committee. A senior white Hall source claimed that this is a major escalation by China. We have never seen anything like this before. Counterterrorism, police swoop on the researcher, and another man in his 30s on suspicion of espionage related offenses in March. The researcher is a Briton who held a parliamentary pass and has worked on worked with MPs on international policy, including relations with Beijing for years. He previously spent time living and working in China, where security officials fear he may have been recruited as a sleeper agent and sent back to Britain with the intention of infiltrating political networks circling or critic, critical of the Beijing regime. The researchers was arrested. The researcher was arrested in Edinburgh, and his London f and his London flat is thought to have been searched by police. The second suspect was arrested in Oxfordshire. Scotland Yard said in a statement last night, officers from the Metro Metropolitan Police arrested two men on March 13 on suspicion of offences under Section One of the Official, Seri uh, Official Secrets Act, 1911. So that's interesting that other countries are having or discovering very severe breaches. Um, with regards to China, and they're saying this is, we've never seen anything like this. Concerning when you consider that our strategy in Canada is to continue to keep our head in the sand. And if somebody's tapping us on the shoulder, saying, hey, you should probably look out of the sand. There's a lot of Chinese people here and they'd like to talk to you. We say, no, we're good. Thank you. We're good. We'll stay here with our head in the sand. No, we don't want to talk to anybody. Tell them to go away. That's just it. They want you to go away. Okay, Ben says, let's talk about Pierre Polyev and how Polyev is resonating. And there are a lot of people, especially, so the convention has adopted certain things. And just because the convention adopts these things, the conservative party themselves does not have to adopt these things. Okay, so just because this is adopted by the convention, I don't know that this is binding to the Conservative Party of Canada, at least not at this stage. Possibly when the convention's all said and done, and they say these are the things that the Conservative Party is going to pursue, maybe, maybe then at that point it's, it's um, somewhat binding. But still, I have a feeling that it's pretty easy for people to forget about what was said in the convention, um, especially when trying to virtue signal about gender or you know not speaking up about legislation to prevent males from competing against females and things like that. So it's it's nice to see that conservatives are voting for this kind of stuff. It's interesting to hear um, Polyev and his rhetoric around keeping our history, um, being proud of our history, 
all, all of this kind of stuff. It's really nice to see at this convention, will it translate to a broader audience? I don't know. Here is Pierre Polyev talking about maintaining Canada's history and learning from French Canada or Quebec. Here we go. You know, this business of deleting our past must end. And this is a matter on which English Canada must start to learn from Quebec. Quebecers, and I'm saying this deliberately in English, do not apologize for their culture, their language, and their history. They celebrate it, and all Canadians should do the same. That is directly against the New World Order messaging, right? Senator Housakis is sharing this clip as well, saying, and I, th I think that generally a lot of Canadians would agree with that statement. And I think that that's something you would expect your government to just kind of basically accept. Like, it's okay to be proud of our history. It's okay to be proud of who you are because who you are is who we are because we're Canada. It's so interesting that the current government hates Canada and hates Canadians that much, so much. CTV News is reporting, Pierre Polyev says Justin Trudeau is not worth the cost. He's not worth the country that we know and that we love. Watch here. So I haven't actually seen the context of that statement. Um, I haven't watched the full speech. I've got another 15 minutes down. I haven't watched the whole thing just because there's so much other thing, so many other things going on this weekend. So apologies about that. Um, but I'm keeping my pulse on what's going on. And I've watched this video. This is uh, Eli, and he's reporting on Pablo Rodriguez coming back again to the Conservative Convention. Here's Liberal Minister Pablo Rodriguez is back outside the Conservative Convention for the second time. This screams desperation. Yeah, there's a lot of people at the convention. People are interested in hearing what Mr. Polyev has to say. There's a, certainly a, a shift in the wind. Every single poll I've seen on Twitter as well has like, who's the best, um, who would you vote for, etc. A lot of polls exclude the PPC, and I think that's interesting. When the PPC are included in the polls, oftentimes the NDP and the Liberals get next to zero, 1% maybe, an amount of responses and the the other response is usually cpc wins but it's like 43 to 51 right um so that's interesting and then i don't know what the rest of seven percent for you know five percent for greens or something like that one percent for the liberals two percent for the ndp whatever it is however it breaks down but it's it's interesting to me the way everything is is managed and shaped you know if the ppc do well we'll just remove them from the poll completely <laughs> CTV News says conservatives promise to slash deficit and interest rates, but won't provide a timeline. Nope. Well, and it's it's interesting. The convention is just happening right now. And I was saying like what they're talking about, what they're voting on, like one of the resolutions got voted on and everybody wanted to bring it forward. And that just means it gets brought forward to talk about again and like brought to the convention floor to talk about more broadly. And I think that they are voting for these things. People want to have these things enshrined. And there, I, I do have confirmation that a few of these things have been um, voted for by the by the majority of the, of the caucus, right? The majority of the membership of the conservative party want these changes. And so we'll see if the Conservative Party listens, because I don't think there's a guarantee that they will. Here's the speech. I just, if you're interested in, in watching the speech, this was an interesting moment at 12 minutes. Uh, hold on, let me just queue it up. Somebody tweeted yesterday, Pierre Polyev's management of two languages, the material that he was talking about, and the disruptions and the crowd, et cetera, et cetera, was quite good. And he should get a lot of credit for that. I thought, I thought he did a good job. It's not easy to speak for the length of time that he's speaking on his feet. And obviously he's practiced what he's doing, but it's not easy to do this, right? So credit where it's due. Here's an interesting thing. What he does well, or what he did well in this speech, and a lot of people are saying this is the best convention speech they've seen in, in you know 30 years or whatever it is. Yeah, maybe so. I, I really... I haven't watched a lot of convention speeches. I watched Andrew Shears, and I thought it was pretty boring. This is better than that one, for sure. I watched um, I watched five minutes of Aaron O'Toole's, and I couldn't get through it. I was like, nope. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. You, I am not watching this. So it was way, it's way better than Aaron O'Toole's. So of, of those three, Polyev's is the best so far. Um, but here, what he does well is the, on this is contrast Trudeau's position to, to his position. The other leaders, historically, Shear was better than... Um, O'Toole, but the other the other leaders historically have not have not contrasted Trudeau's failures as starkly as Polyev is doing in this speech. Here's an example. 
Mr. Trudeau says that Canada has no core identity and that it's not the best country in the world. What kind of prime minister, after eight years of leading a country, would say that it's not the best country in the world? And what does that say about how he's been governing it? J'ai été très soulagé. I think that's interesting. Like, who, how, how could you govern the country for eight years and say it's not the best country in the world? And if you say it's the best, it's not the best country in the world. It's like saying, you know, here's here's my house. It's pretty crappy. Like, maybe you should fix that, man. If you think if you think your house is crappy, like, you should do something about that, right? It's it's very interesting. Why would Trudeau think that Canada is 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 that way, right? Why would he? Why would he make that case? Why would he do that when he's the one in charge of it? It seems, and he's done such a piss, I mean, he's done a t piss poor job, that's for sure. Here's Andrew Lawton. He says, conservatives pass policy resolution opposing gender transition for children. So that's, I mean, a step in the right direction. Here's Eli reporting the same. Conservative party delegates overwhelmingly adopt a major uh, emotion, excuse me, in favor of merit-based hiring and against diversity, equity, and inclusion, DEI practicing. So sorry, this is, there's, there's a bunch of resolutions that are being adopted by the, by the uh, membership. Here's another one. Uh, Pierre's conservative, or Polyev's conservative party overwhelmingly votes to protect biological women's sports and spaces. Conservatives will go into the next ele election as defenders of the basic dignity of women. Um, Good. Here's another one. 69% of Conservative Party of Canada delegates adopt a motion opposing the medical gender transition of children. So that's good. Yay. Right. I mean, objective reality, reality that exists outside of your own head is and, and something that's shared with other people, you know, like this, this cup is orange, right? I hope it's orange and not like red. Um, I think it's orange. Um, but objective reality there are two lights right or whatever however many lights there actually are or like if there actually are two apples sitting on the table everybody agrees that's two apples sitting on a table objective reality exists and gender is one of those things and like if you if you stray from the um typical then that is not to deny your existence or anything to that effect but you can't create policy for less than one percent of the population it's insane it doesn't make any sense. It does damage to the majority of the population to create policy that way. And so like, I'm glad that there's a political party whose membership is saying we should absolutely have objective reality with regards to this thing that has objective reality to it, right? Like that has elements of objective reality to it. And certainly like if there's a situation where there's a person who is um, wanting to be treated in a civil manner, then you could, you could, do that but that doesn't mean right this way you can you can compete against these women here we hope you win you know like no <laughs> that's not being treated in a civil way that's removing the women's right to being treated in a civil way yes ladies this is you know like marquina right and marquina's here is going to swim against you sure he was not a very good male swimmer but i'm sure he'll do just fine against you ladies i mean she'll do just fine against you ladies that's insane that's an insane thing to ask the women to accept how in the heck are we supposed it is unacceptable to say to people you need to quiet your concerns about this biologically male person because that's bigoted in order to make this person feel better your feelings don't matter how is that acceptable <laughs> How is that the position? Oh, well, you know, that might make them feel bad. Yeah, we have to let men come into women's change room and watch women change because not letting them in there might make them feel bad. So, so what? Have you thought about how the women being ogled by this man feel? They might feel bad for being ogled by the man. So like, let's get back to reality here, folks. So I'm glad that there's a political party whose membership is saying this is the direction we should go. That's a good thing. And if they go in that direction and they fix things, ultimately that's good for Canada. If we don't have to go through a war to restore sanity to our politics, maybe he'll clear out the, the crooked liberal judges as well. Who knows, right? But it seems like that's a, a great best case scenario. Do I trust the CPC? No. Do I trust Polyev? No. A lot of people will love this. A lot of people will look at this and say, he's checking all the boxes. He's doing exactly what he needs to do to win the, the general election. He will, he's eating the PPC's lunch by, by, using these gender, um, by, by using these gender ideology positions in order to kind of outflank the PPC because that was a strong suit that Mr. Bernier was very vocal on already. And now if Polyev comes out swinging on it, then 
he can take those votes that would vote for the PPC and and really bolster his his campaign. Now, does he need those? I don't think he views. I don't think Polyev views this as a position if he if he adopts it to eat the PPC's lunch. But I think it would eat the PPC's lunch to to a degree if he adopts it right. And if he doesn't, if he ignores it, then he could fracture his party. So it's a it's kind of a very um, not serious, but it's 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 not a zero sum game. He can't ignore it. He has to do something about it. Will the party listen to the to the convention and follow through? And people will be watching, right? And so. It'll be interesting. I hope objective reality wins out. And and honestly, having like a conservative party that's conservative, have another conservative party that's more conservative, argu- arguing for more conservative things as like an NDP size style party that, or even one that could hold the balance of power. I, I don't think that makes things worse. I think that makes things better. So, I've, but maybe that's just my opinion. Um, anyway, uh, it definitely is just, well, it is my opinion, but I think that it's a lot of other people's opinion too. I think that there's lots of space for people to have a have a principled conservative party that's a, a centrist party like Polyev's conservative party that he's putting together now that would benefit from a party that is further right, that is like Bernier's party, that it, it doesn't compromise on ideals, et cetera, et cetera, and is able to push policy like pushing the conservative party to the to further to the right, right? Because exi- this is a good example of that. Because if the conservative party ignores this will of their um, convention, then people are going to be upset, and they're going to look for another place, another party that's going to listen to them, right? Hopefully, <laughs> they land a PPC. But will the PPC listen? I don't know. <laughs> no guarantees there either, right? No guarantees there. Hello, everyone. Thanks very much for watching. This is just a short version of a longer show. If you'd like to get the whole show, you can go over to canadapoly.com and sign up for a subscription. Just look in the drop down tab for shop and donate and look for subscriptions and you'll get immediate access to the full show. Love to see you. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.